Hello and good morning. Uh, today, we're going to be working on freecodecamp.com, the intermediate algorithm scripting challenges. Specifically, today, we're going to be working on the Roman numeral converter. Now, there's many ways to get this done, as usual. However, there's going to be something, uh, one special way I want to show you how to do it, and it has to do with working with objects. And so that's what we want to do today is take a look at how we can work with objects. So I'm going to share my screen and take a look at the challenge itself. And you can see I already have an object set up here. Um, and why I really want to work you through this is a little bit later on in these projects, we really need to uh, have a great understanding of objects and even working with data and arrays and things like JSON data or JSON data, however you want to say that. All right, so let's take a look at how we can use a simple object and some for and while loops to get this done. So, numerals to begin with, and if you're not familiar with Roman numerals, think of like Rocky one, two, three, four, and they have I's and V's. And you can see here all the different ways that we can write out numbers and letters. Okay, and so here we go with Roman numeral formatting, you know, um, you know, VI, you know, is a V plus I or a five plus one and you get six. All right. And you can go back and forth. So what we want to do is we want to generate a program here um, or a function. That's all it's really is a function, a really program that will take us through and convert. And so let's first take a look at an object and you know, obviously I've gone through and I've tested this already. That's why all these are checked off. Um, so I just kind of deleted my code except for my object because it sitting down watching me type through an object is not very exciting. So what I've done here is I've created an object. That object has key value pairs, okay? So we have various key value uh, pairs here. And each of these... Uh, keys, all right, and, and values. So we're going to be talking about uh, properties. So the properties are going to be, the uh, the properties are going to have values. So like M has a value of 1000, CM 900. So what we've done is we've broken down this object into all the different types of variables we can get. Uh, Roman numerals, they just stack up. So number one is I, two is II, three is III. However, four is neither I, 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 you know, four of them, nor is it um, something separate. Um, it is actually subtracting one from five. So in order to, to account for this, each instance of this where we have something unique where we can't just add on in a string these letters, we had to create a new property. So four is IV, that's a special. Um, it had to be a new property because we can't just add that. Same thing with nine. Nine is IX. So we, again, we had to create a new property for that. Um, then we have 10, 40, um, 50, 90, XC, C, and then 400. All right. And so you can see one, four, five, nine, one, four, five, nine, one, four, five, nine. So on and on and on, we have the same pattern where we can just sort of add up these letters. And these letters are all going to add together in a string. So we need to be able to take um, numbers, all right, integers, and translate them to strings. So we're going to be doing it using this right here. Um, notice that my object starts from the largest numbers at the top here and then goes down to the smaller numbers. So logically, we are going to be taking, all right, so we're going to be taking our uh, input. Our input here is going to be a, de a decimal number, or actually they're not giving decimal numbers, they're just giving us integers. So they're just giving us an integer. So I want to take an integer and from left to right start with the largest value. So I want to start with the largest value. All right, and that's why we're up here at the M. And then I need to subtract that value from the number. 
then I have to add, I have strings, so it's gonna be a string value to Roman. So Roman here is going to be our output variable. That's why I have return Roman. And another little thing that I added in here was when you declare variables, um, so I have var object here, just obj for my object. And I'll show you where I got just object from and why I just used that in a second. Um, but at the end of this object, I, instead of a semicolon, I have a comma. And then I just have my next variable Roman declared. And then at the end of all of my variables, then I have a, uh, a semicolon saying that that's the end of that sentence. So by adding this comma in, we can declare multiple variables and then not end that sentence until we're done declaring variables. So something else I wanted to show you with this. And notice Roman is an empty string and we're returning a string. So we're going to be adding the values to uh, that string Roman and then moving on. So, but here's an issue. If we just iterate through this we say that let's say we have 2500 if we take a look we say okay the thousand spot here is here so I have an M okay but then we have to check again to see if there is still another M there so 2000 should be M M uh, D for 2500 right so I have to be able to subtract uh, this uh, value here from the number and then check it again against my object and then if it's smaller than 1000 the leftover I'm gonna come down and check here and say okay is it smaller or greater than 900 if it's gonna if it's 2500 okay after I take off my two M's it's all gonna be 500 so it's to be smaller then we'll come down here and say is it smaller or equal to this oh it's equal to that all right let's add a D so we get MMD, and then the result of that will be zero, so that we're not going to have anything else. So that's sort of the logic that we're going to use to work through this here. So we're going to add that string value to Roman. Um, and then we're going to check again. And all of this needs to be repeated over and over and over again, which means we're going to be needing a while loop. So that's how we're going to do this. But before we get into this, because the code itself is rather short and straightforward, but we're more concerned with this right here. So here is this uh, working with objects page. And all I did was uh, Google uh, working with object properties and use this uh, MDN website because that's the one free code camp uses and it seems to be a little bit more robust than the other options. So here I found scrolling down that you can use bracket notation, all right, with for in to iterate over all the enumerable objects, enumerable properties of an object. So we're looking at the key value pairs. So if I want to go through and, and check against every one of these properties here, so the M1000, all these key value pairs, all these properties, okay, I can just use a for in loop, okay, so by just saying for var i in object, and that will iterate through each of these properties. All right, so that sounds like exactly what we want to do here. Cool, so we found our uh, solution, or part of our solution. So let's just do that. So we're gonna start by iterating through all of these largest values. So how do we iterate through all of these largest values? Again, we're just gonna use for in loop so for bar i in object right and that's why i called my object object actually because that's the that's what i found right here so then we can do stuff so for var i in object so let's open this and i will scroll this down for you so for var i an object, what do we want to do? Well, what we want to do is we want to check, all right, the largest value that we have and do all this stuff. So we want to, let's say, check for how many times, how many m's we need. Now, if we have a number like uh, 54, let's say, 
all right, we will need zero M's, okay? For zero CMs, we will need zero Ds, and we're just, we'll go all the way down to, let's say we're trying to get to 54. We wanna do this for each of these properties till we get to L and say, oh, we need one L. Okay, so we need L, one L, so we need uh, 54. So what we'd have to do is say, okay, 50 is um, greater than or equal to 50. And then we wanna subtract that from 54 and we'll be left with four. All right, so that's one L. We'll iterate back down through all these properties until we get to four. All right, and then you will get L, I, V. The remainder will be zero, so you'll need no more I's either. So how do we do that? So simple while loop. So while our num okay, is greater than or equal to our object I. So what that's saying is that while our number, all right, our object, our var i and object, so you're looking at the object and then the value of that property. So while the number is greater than or equal to the value of that object property, all right, what do we want to do? Simple. The only thing we need to do is we need to take our Roman, our Roman numeral and plus equal our i. In the case of that 54, it's gonna check all of these, nothing, 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 and then say, oh, um, oh, 50. Okay, we do have one of those, all right? So 50 is greater or larger than 50. So I'm just going to add, now Roman is a string value, and since we're just identifying the property itself, okay, we're just gonna get the key, and the key is a string, that string is L, and we're gonna pop that string into our Roman string, okay, or our Romanized string. And then we just have to take our num, okay, our num again is our argument that we're taking into our function, and we're just gonna subtract the value of that property. So how do we get the value of that property? Because that value is gonna be the integer that we want. We can just say that, the object i. All right, and if we take a look at some of these, what we've done here, we have subtracted the value from the num, we've added the value to the string, and then we check again. How are we checking again? Because we're in a while loop. So we checked again. So we find the largest value, okay, var i in object. And so while the num is greater than or equal to object, that's finding our largest value. Okay, that will iterate through each one and see if this is true. If this is true, we're gonna go in here, then add that uh, string to our Roman, and then decrement the uh, num by the value of that property. But now since we're in a while loop, it's going to keep checking to see if we need more than one letter. So if our number is 3,000, okay, or let's say it's 9,000, because that's better, because you know, if or it could be over 9,000, you never know. Um, so let's say it's over 9,000, let's say it's 9,001. So we're gonna come in here, so while that num is 9,000, all right, so 9,000, let's say 9,000 is greater than 1,000, we're gonna add an M. All right, so add an M to Roman, and then subtract 1,000 from num. So now num will be 8,000, all right? And then it says, okay, that's still greater than 1,000. Yes, it is, let's add another M. So we get MM, and then subtract 1,000 from num, and now we get 7,000, so on and so forth, till we get down to nine M's, okay? And when we get to nine M's, all right, we're gonna keep iterating through. We're gonna have one left, so one is not greater than or equal to this, or this, or this, or this, or this, or this. Get all the way down to here, all right? And we'll get to, at one, it will be greater than or equal to it, so we'll add that I on the end of it. Now, granted, I think 9,000, just by looking at our pattern, probably won't be nine M's, it'll 
probably be something else uh, entirely. But uh, as far as this is concerned, um, the numbers that we're looking at here are pretty small. They're f only up to a thousand or four thousand, let's say. So yeah, it's not even including four thousand because four thousand is actually going to be a, most likely it's going to be a different letter. I don't even know. We don't. I never. I didn't have to deal with that. So um, let's look at this. You know what? I don't know. Hey, if you guys figure out if there's another one for four thousand, let me know because it probably is just following this pattern. But that's okay for now. The logic remains the same. So either way. We were working with objects and object properties, the key value pairs, okay? So objects have properties and that property has a key and a value. So we're looking at the key value pairs, all right? And that is the object properties themselves. And now we can access those keys or values by either using, if we use a for in loop, this I is going to represent, all right? That I themselves is gonna represent just the key where we can say the object all right, call the actual object itself with the bracket notation I will get us the value itself. And that's really what I want you to take a look at and um, understand for today is that how to access the key, how to access the variable in each property of an object. Okay, and an object is, you know, pretty much like a fancier array sort of. All right, so just kind of think of it like that and we can access the key or the values for the key value pairs, which is important, okay? And then we can manipulate our arguments into our function. So hopefully this makes sense. Um, I think it's a pretty concise um, way of getting this done. So if this was helpful, that's great. If you have any questions, you could always ask me and I'll be happy to help. All right, thanks. Pshh.